Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be answering your questions that I receive either on my video comments or on Instagram. So a lot of people ask me about very, very different things related to living and working and studying in Istanbul. And because sometimes I get the same question from different people, I decided instead of individually replying to every single person, why don't I just make a Q&A on YouTube and give you guys all of the answers that you need? So without further ado, let's get started. So the first question that I get asked a lot, the most common question is, what's Istanbul like? Honestly, this question is, it frustrates me because I don't know how to answer this question. Istanbul is great. Very simply put, it's great. But if you are looking for something specific, then I need you to be more specific with your questions. Like what's Istanbul like in terms of weather, in terms of working, in terms of studying? Then maybe I can help you out a little bit more. But if you're looking for a general answer, it's great. What documents do I need to apply for a scholarship? Okay, so scholarships are provided either by a certain institution or a certain university or a government. What you you will need to do is you need to research a specific scholarship you qualify for and then go through the list of all of the required documents they're asking from you. Usually this information is found on the website of the relevant institution or university or the government page. Generally, if you're applying for a scholarship to study in a university in an undergraduate degree, you're going to need to show your high school diploma, your high school transcripts. Uh, if you're going to be studying in English, you need to show your English exam results, teachers' recommendations or employers' recommendations and you need to specify why you need a scholarship. So you need to write a very good and persuasive letter explaining why you want to study in the major that you want to study and why the scholarship program will benefit you or contribute to your goal. Number three, usually, not all universities, but most universities would teach law and medicine in Turkish. How much do schools cost? Private or public or international schools? This person asked me if $10,000 a year would be enough to put his son through one year of international or private school. Yes, in some cases it's exactly what's asked for, what's demanded, and in some cases it's way more than enough. Also from personal experience working in a private school, I would say they require from 44,000 liras, Turkish liras, it can go up to like 60, 70,000 Turkish liras per year. Someone asked me if 4,500 Turkish liras per month is enough money to survive on with a family. In Istanbul, I would say this amount of money is very limiting. You would need to have a little bit more than this to support the family. However, if you're a single person or you're a couple, this could be fine. If you're a family with children, this amount of money per month would mean that you're on a budget and you'd have to be very careful with your spending. Somebody asked me if $500 per month is enough. Again, same answer. If it's a family, you would have to be a little bit more careful with your money. If it's not a family, if a single person or two people, three people, adults, usually you can make a budget plan and manage with this amount of money. Somebody asked me if 2,700 liras per month is a good salary. No, half of your salary will be going to rent and for expenses in the house and then the rest you're gonna have to spend on transportation and food. So basically leaves very, very limited amount of money for anything else. What do I need for a residency permit application? All of the information related to applying for residency permits are on the website of the e -Ikamet. In this website, you can find information both in Turkish and English, obviously. These are vaguely the documents that you will need to provide. So if you're a student, then you're gonna need to show that you got accepted to a university here, um, if you have a scholarship, you need to prove that as well in a document form. If you're working here, you don't need to really take care of your residency permit or your work permit. The company that hired you, usually they take care of it for you. Do I need to have a house contract for residency permit? And no, you don't need to have it. Wherever you're staying, you can just put that document in there in your application saying, I'm staying in a hotel for this long, or I'm staying in an Airbnb for this long, or I'm staying with my friend or my relative for this long and your relative or your friend would have to write a declaration saying that yes, you are staying with them and notarize it and include it in your application. Are Turkish people friendly? Will I make a lot of Turkish friends? Okay, so Turkish people are generally very, very friendly and accommodating and welcoming. However, as a foreigner who's been living here for eight years, I barely have any Turkish friends. Most of my friends are all foreigners like me and we all communicate in English. So chances of you making Turkish friends will depend on your um, 
your circumstance, like your place, your location, if you're going to be working in an environment with lots of Turkish people, chances are you're going to make lots of Turkish friends. If not, if you're in a university setting, if you're a student, well, most probably you're going to make lots of international friends, like, you know, foreign friends, but not really Turkish people. How long do I need to learn the Turkish language? Okay, depending on where you're coming from, if you are from Central Asia, from the Middle East, from the Balkan Peninsula, it's a lot easier for you guys to learn Turkish. However, if you're coming from anywhere else, it's going to be a little bit difficult and it usually takes like maybe two to three months to just learn basic phrases. It also depends on you and how determined you are to learn the language. For me, it took six months to learn the language really, really, really well. That I was able to start my studies in Turkish as well and I'm from Central Asia. What's the situation with the virus or with the pandemic? So the situation in Turkey right now is more so controlled or under control. Everybody without any exceptions has to wear masks in public, in public spaces, in the streets, everywhere. Except for when you are in a cafe or restaurant and you're eating, it's fine. Other than that, there's no curfew, there's no quarantine. There's nothing um, like that going on anymore. More and more people are always encouraged to get tested and encouraged to stay away from really crowded and busy places. Also, like recently, cinemas and bars and clubs have opened up, but I'm not sure clubs can really um, open and function to their full capacity because there are certain restrictions still at play. At least this is what I know, but right now, even though cases are increasing day by day, Still, the situation seems to be under control. Are Turkish people conservative? Is Turkey a secular country? Are people liberal and open-minded? Okay. So most of this country is conservative. Lots of people in this country are very conservative. They are Muslim. They have very traditional and conservative ways of living. And that's usually mm, like most of Turkey, mostly in the eastern part of Turkey. However, in the western part of Turkey, people are more liberal, more western-centric, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily open-minded, because you can be open-minded whether you're conservative or uh, not. On paper, Turkey is supposed to be secular, but in real life, in practice, um, we can see that it's not. Are people open-minded? Of course, it depends from one person to another. The people that I know, like Turkish people that I know, are very, very open-minded Turkish people. However, um, I've seen and come across people who are not very open-minded and that's fine. That happens everywhere in every other country, so moving on. Do people in Turkey speak English? Yes, but not everywhere. So in Istanbul, the Asian and the European side, there's two sides, right? So people usually speak English more on the European side. Almost everywhere you go, you will find people speaking basic English and you'll find a lot more foreigners, um, menus in English, you know, any writings in English, announcements in, in English. You'll find that. It's very common on the European side because that's more touristic. However, the Asian side is not very touristic, so most of the Asian side, you will not really find people who speak English. But, you know, central places usually have lots of people speaking in English. Um, official offices, you know, such as banks, some government offices, the post office sometimes, some call center, customer service, usually does offer help or services in English as well. How are tuition fees paid? So this is related to university students. Are they paid yearly or are they paid per semester? So there are options. You can pay per semester or you can pay for the whole year. Or if you have a credit card with the specific bank that the university is linked to, you can pay via installments that they will take from your credit card every other month. Somebody asked me if 300,000 liras is enough to buy a house in Turkey. Okay, so most of the houses are in the form of apartments. So yes, it is enough to buy an apartment. Depending on the place and the size of the apartment, you can find a really great house for 300,000. But usually if you want a really beautiful location, a big house, something modern with a great architecture and interior, um, it's gonna cost a little bit more than that. As an English teacher as well, well, I used to be an English teacher, people ask me how can somebody become an English teacher in a school or in an institution or a language school, anything like that. To become a private English teacher, it's the, you don't have so many restrictions, 
you just find your own clients and you can just teach them online or you can teach them in their house or their house or in a cafe somewhere it's very very possible and such options exist you can find them on facebook and groups however if you want to work in an institution teaching english you can obviously have a contract always have a contract if you're working so you can get your income properly and on time and english is really highly demanded in turkey so you can work for them they pay really well as well however if you, if you want to work in a school as an english teacher the requirements are really really strict you would need to have a diploma bachelor's degree you would need to show that you can speak english of course they also demand that you have teaching experience or you specifically majored on this topic or children's health or children's psychology so that you actually fit the position of a teacher in a school okay so that was it for this video i hope this video was useful to you i hope you got the information you needed thank you so much for watching this video if you guys have any questions leave it down in the comment section below or message me on instagram and i will probably make a part two of this video right so see you guys in my next video bye